What's up guys, Zach with Wired Customs, and today we're gonna to be talking about Protronics on your flathead Ford. So a question I get asked a lot, is Protronics better than points? Um, there is an argument to be made for both sides. What I can tell you is, at one point in time, Protronics phased out points. Points did go to the wayside and stopped existing. So that's a good argument to have there. Now, if you're super traditionalist and you want to restore a car back to how it came from the showroom floor, um, points are completely fine. Um, points are not for high RPM and high horsepower engines. Um, just mechanically speaking, uh, if the engine starts spinning fast enough, the points are bumping off of that lobe. And on a point setup, that lobe on the distributor is opening and closing the points. The spring is returning it back. And at a certain RPM, that spring won't be fast enough of a return before that lobe comes around again. And you get what's called points floating or floating points. That means they're basically doing nothing. The motor's ignition starts to cut out on you. That does happen on any motor, but stock motors should not have the RPMs that high. Now, a Petronics module inside of original distributor is one of your options. Um, in my personal opinion, this is a little bit of an upgrade to the stock points. You get a little bit cleaner signal since it's working off a magnet now, and it's not a physical contact point opening and closing. Um, this isn't going to wear out like a point will, and if a car sits in the humidity and moisture, I'm in Virginia, there's a lot of humidity there's been plenty of times in my area, a car won't start, all I have to do is sand the points down, it'll start again. You won't have that problem with Petronics. Um, if you leave a Petronics ignition on overnight, it's going to boil your coil. I've seen it happen a million times. I left the key on, I didn't kill the battery, but now my car won't start, it's cranking just fine. It's because you just melted the inside of the coil. So each one kind of has an up and down to it. It all depends on the type of motor you're building, um, how nostalgic you want it to be. Upgrading these distributors doesn't really kill the look factor in my opinion. Um, there's two extra wires that come out to the coil. We'll explain how to do that here in a second. But I don't think it kills the nostalgia look. It might kill the nostalgia feel just for you personally. But that's completely up to your own choice. In my opinion, the distributors with the Petronics built into them are better than just upgrading your original distributor to Petronics. Now, whether if you want Petronics or you're worried about the nostalgia factor, that's completely your decision. I'm not telling you which one is better. They both have their ups and they both have their downs. But if you wanna know how to install Petronics, I'm about to explain that right now. Say Petronics like 10 times fast. You probably slur it up a couple times. I know I'm doing it right now. Um, so if you're going with Petronics, there's a lot of things you need to know about them. You can't just throw it in, start it up, um, if you hook it up wrong, as in positive and ground wrong, so if you hook it up on the coil wrong, it's gonna blow the Petronics right away. So if you're running a 12 volt positive system, make sure the positive goes to the positive side of the coil, make sure the ground goes to the ground side of the coil, and make sure your coil is key switched. It's extremely important in Petronics. Um, that's, that will burn up, like I said before, your coil, and it'll also fry and melt this Petronics. Now, if you're thinking about that being a problem as unreliable, let's think about this as well. Every car that I have running with points, I always have a spare set of points in the glove box, and I always carry a little piece of sandpaper in all the glove boxes. So in case moisture gets to it and you have to sand the points a little bit, or in case you leave the key on somewhere and you melt the points yourself at a car show, something like that. So if you're thinking about the difference in the two and which one's more reliable, I'd say that's a 50-50 straight even cut. But obviously, like I was saying with RPM, this is going to win with the RPM, high revving, hot rod style motors. If you're going with Petronics, you have to have the right coil. These are the only coils I use for Petronics, the flamethrower, okay? Where's the part number? Part number 40011. And I don't know if that's an advanced part number, that's where I get these from, just advanced auto parts. So you might have to cross-reference that part number, but flamethrower, 1.5 ohm coil. That's ex extremely important. It has to be the 1.5 ohm non-ballast coil. Don't run anything else. You can run whatever brand name that you want. 
Uh, that's totally your personal choice, but this is what Petronix needs ohm-wise, non-ballast. When you're running points, obviously make sure you run a ballast resistor before the coil. Now, one thing you need to know, since I'm an early Ford Smith, I obsess with early Fords, they have a built-in ballast resistor on a lot of the models. A lot of the models is underneath the dash. So if you're converting your car from six volts to 12 volts, I have a whole video just on that. Check that out. But you need to make sure you take that ballast resistor out of the circuit before it gets to this coil. So another thing you're going to need to get everything to talk to each other and work properly together is to get rid of the solid core wires. I get my wires from Millworks Hot Rods. Check them out, millworkshotrods.com. Um, hey, there's a sticker right there. Sweet, one for the toolbox. But they sell this awesome kit from Stromberg. I love putting Stromberg stuff on my flatheads. It's something nice knowing that it's not from China and it's from a real genuine company that actually cares about their quality. Check out these wires. I have a whole video of how to run them on a flathead, how to crimp them, how to strip them, all that kind of stuff. So you can get that information individually in that video. But these come with one side crimped, the other side long and not crimped. So you can cut them to size. I love cutting my spark plug wires to size. There's nothing I hate more than opening a hood and seeing a wasp nest of freaking spark plug wires, super length, flopped all over the place. It's just nasty and ugly. Cut and crimp your own wires. It is very, very easy especially with this kit from Millworks Hot Rod. So if you're gonna go Petronix, I would recommend going with a Petronix distributor and not the Petronix insert to an original distributor. They work, I'm not saying they don't, but I am saying the Petronix distributors from Malroy and Stromberg work way better than those. I had this beautiful maroon 47 Ford Coupe sitting right here. I put the Stromberg e-fire that I got from Millworks Hot Rods in it. It looks great. It looks like a 60s hot rod. It looks very traditional, but it's also going to have the quality of Stromberg for one and the reliability um, from the Petronix as well. So this could be a nice highway driven, but also drag race driven car. It's going to have nice high RPM run really smoothly in the top end, uh, opposed to points breaking up in the top end. If you're going Petronix, hook them up correctly. Make sure you get the right spark plug wires. Make sure you get the right coil and make sure that coil is not running through a ballast resistor. It has to be one that does not require a ballast resistor. That's extremely important. Yes, your car will run if you mismatch some of these parts and you set it up wrong. Um, it will run, but it won't run that well. It'll run for a significantly shorter amount of time compared to if you just set it up correctly. It'll still look traditional, which is my big thing. If I'm okay with it, it's still going to have the traditional look to it. I hope you guys appreciated this information. Um, a lot of it gets misconstrued through the forums. This guy did this, that guy did that. I'm just trying to straighten it out for you. If you enjoyed this video, just like it, share it, subscribe to my channel. Now stop watching YouTube, get in the garage, and get your shift together. Let's